Hello everyone, in this video we're going to think a bit about the centrifugal force from a mathematical perspective, and in particular we're going to show why it points outwards. Okay, now in my last video I derived the equation of motion for an object as seen from the point of view of a rotating frame, and showed where the various fictitious force terms come from, including the centrifugal force which is given by this equation that I've written up at the top here. So the centrifugal force is minus m omega crossed with omega cross r, and in this equation m is the mass of the object that we're looking at, omega is the angular velocity of the rotating frame, and r is the position vector of the object that we're looking at. And so it's often written in this form with the with the minus sign, I'm just going to firstly um, get rid of the minus sign by changing the order of the cross product, right? So if we write it as m omega cross r, and then that vector crossed with omega, that's the same thing, but we don't have to think about that uh, minus sign in the front. Okay, so to make some progress um, on finding out which direction this points in, let's draw a little diagram of the various vectors involved. So we have our angular velocity vector, let's say it's pointing in this direction here, okay, so I'm going to label that as omega, and our particle could be sitting anywhere, let me just draw an arbitrary r vector, position vector, over here, right, so here's our two vectors involved in the centrifugal force equation, and the centrifugal force equation has two cross products, right, we've got omega cross r, and then we cross that whole thing with the omega vector, so let's think about the first cross product first, omega cross r. Now the way I like to think about this is imagine turning your omega vector towards your r vector and imagining what direction a screw would go in if you turned it in that sense. So here if we turn omega towards r, we would be turning it clockwise, right, and therefore if we turn this imaginary screw it's going to go into the screen, okay, and so we can label that, we can draw a vector going into the screen as a circle with a little cross going through it, so I'm going to just draw that at the base here, um, so there's a circle, and I'm going to put a cross through it to show that it's going into the page. Okay, so this represents, this circle with the cross in it represents the vector omega cross r, and just for clarity I'm going to write out explicitly that it's going into the screen. Okay, and so that's the direction that omega cross r is going in, how about its magnitude? Well the magnitude of a cross product omega cross r um, is given by the magnitudes, the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors, so omega and r written without an arrow above them, and we have to multiply that by the sine of the angle between them. So I'm going to define this angle here as theta, and the magnitude of this cross product is just going to be omega r sine theta. Okay, so let's think about what happens when uh, we take the next cross product, right? So then we take that vector, and we take the cross product of that with the omega vector, now omega cross r is going into the screen, okay, and omega is just in the plane of the screen pointing up at this, this angle that we've shown it here, and the omega vector is going to be perpendicular to both of those, right? And so what's going to end up happening if we turn our omega cross r vector towards our omega vector, um, our omega cross r crossed with omega vector ends up pointing in the plane of the screen, um, but also perpendicular to the omega vector, right? So it ends up going like this, where that angle here is uh, 90 degrees, okay. So let me label that as well, this is our omega cross r crossed with omega vector, um, which is proportional to the centrifugal force vector that we're actually interested in f, right? And so this is the direction that the centrifugal force vector points in, uh, and note that it's pointing directly outwards, right? So what this particle or this object is doing with position vector r, it's rotating around in this, um, well in an, in an inertial frame, it's rotating around uh, this omega vector, right? And so our centrifugal force, we've just shown by thinking about the directions of the cross product, we've just shown that it points directly outwards along what we might think of as its orbital radius, okay? Now let's think about the magnitude of that force. So we know the magnitude of omega cross r, what does that imply about the magnitude of um, omega crossed with 
Omega cross R. Um, well, it's going to be Omega, right? The magnitude of this first vector times the magnitude of the second vector, which we already know is Omega R sine theta. So we multiply that by Omega R sine theta. Okay. And then we have to multiply that by the, the, the sign of the angle between these two vectors, but we've just explained just now, right, that these two vectors are perpendicular. This angle here is 90 degrees, so we just multiply by sine of 90 degrees, but that's just one, okay? And so we've shown that this is r sine theta times omega squared. In other words, what this implies, right, if you think about the centrifugal force, the magnitude of f is going to be m times r sine theta times omega squared, right? In other words, we can think of it as like the mass m times what we might call the orbital radius times uh, the angular velocity squared, right? So this is the kind of familiar uh, expression that is usually encountered um, before, before you see this kind of full vector form. So that's where it comes from. Um, that's, you know, this, the direction and magnitude that we are familiar with, mr omega squared, is kind of implied by uh, by this vector form. Okay, I just want to also talk about an alternative way that we can see this using a, a useful vector identity. Okay, so another thing we could do is use the following vector identity, um, which is a, any vector a, crossed with b cross c, right, these are just three arbitrary vectors, that is always equal to a dotted with c times the b vector minus a dotted with b times the uh, the c vector. Okay, and so we can apply this identity here because our, our centrifugal force is exactly of this form a crossed with b cross c. So let's think about that, right? So our f is minus m omega crossed with omega crossed with r. Okay, so we've got this kind of pre-factor of minus m, and then so basically our a and b vectors are both omega, and our c vector is r, right? And so what happens is, um, well, if we dot our a with our c, that's like dotting omega with r, so we get omega dot r, and that is in the b direction, but b is omega, so we get an omega there. And then from the second term that we have to subtract off, a dot b is just omega dotted with itself, right? So omega dot omega, okay, which is actually the same thing as um, the, the magnitude of omega squared, right? And we have to multiply that whole thing by the r vector. Right, so how can we simplify this a bit? Well, let's get rid of the minus sign in the front, we get m, and then we have to put the second term first if we get rid of that minus sign. So let's write that as um, omega squared times the position vector r minus omega dot r times omega. Okay, and then what we can do actually is factor out this omega squared, right? So if I write this uh, as m omega squared times something, well, the first term is just r. And what about this second term? Well, notice that we can write the omega vector as omega without a vector symbol, meaning the magnitude of omega, right, times uh, a unit vector in the omega direction. So I'm going to show that as omega with a hat, meaning it's just the unit vector going in the omega direction. And so what we can do, right, is write the second term as um, r Remember, this is coming from, from over here. We get r dot omega hat times omega hat, right? Because we've got two omega hats, um, we would get a factor of omega squared, and that's taken care of because we've written that out in the front. Okay, and so how can we make sense of this? How can we interpret this? Um, well, notice that what this vector really is, right? We take our position vector r, and we subtract off something, and the thing that we subtract off is just the component of r that is directed along the omega vector, right? Because 
this dot product r dot omega hat that is exactly the component of r along the omega direction and then we turn it into a vector by multiplying by omega hat so we take our position vector and we subtract off the part of that position vector um, which is parallel to the omega vector and so we arrive at the same conclusion right that um, the force is well directed perpendicular to the omega vector because we've subtracted off the part that's parallel to it um, and it, we also re reproduce the conclusion that is of magnitude m omega squared times the orbital radius right because this um, r minus r dot omega hat omega hat vector that is just the component of r which is perpendicular to to the omega vector okay and therefore the magnitude of that is just what we would call the the orbital radius um, of this this particle right it's this this distance there okay so hopefully that's given you a bit of insight into um, why the centrifugal force is directed outwards in a rotating frame from a mathematical perspective in my next video um, i'll talk a bit more about the centrifugal force but more from a kind of physically intuitive point of view as to to why we would expect it to be pointing outwards